Hey there. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I use Make Human, which is a free software product that creates human characters. Um, I'm going to show how I use this product to create a base mesh that I then import into Blender where I can further refine it and create something even better. And then from within Blender, I might even export it into something Substance Painter where I can retexture it. Um, but I start my start my human projects in something like uh, Make Human because it gives me a good foundation with good topology and I can do it pretty quickly and I can do a fair amount of customization on the figure uh, to get close to what I want in Blender without a lot of work. Um, the interface is pretty simple. This is the default character. If I hold the left mouse button down and drag, I rotate like this. If I hold the middle mouse button and drag, I pan. And if I hold the right mouse, I zoom in and out. You can also zoom in and out with the... Uh, with the um, scroll wheel. The interface up here, we've got a bunch of tabs and each one of these tabs then will, if I click on one of these, it's going to change the set of tabs that's below it. So my workflow typically is I just kind of click on these one at a time and as I go through these, I go click on these one at a time just so I don't miss anything. Um, this is the first one, the main one, where you're going to make your biggest changes, more masculine, more feminine, you know, older, younger. Um, you can do quite a range of ages here, uh, more or less muscle, heights, uh, and then even race. So you, if you're looking for particular characteristics, you can just dial them into what you want. Under gender, there's some gender specific things you can change if you want to. Under face, you'll see this interface. It's common here where we have a set of tools on the left and a set of radio buttons on the right. And these radio buttons here define which values are available over here. So as I, you know, I click on the head shape, I get head shape options. Uh, and then head size options, forehead options, eyebrow options, you know, all the way down. One thing you want to think about, some of these are left and right, so you can create an asymmetrical character, which, you know, may be something you want to do. Um, if you're going to be sculpting it later in Blender, it's probably best to have a symmetrical, so that you can use the x-axis symmetry when you're sculpting, that'll save time. If you want to ensure that your character remains symmetrical, you can click on this button here, and then if you make changes, say, to the right bag. So I've got right eye selected, and I add bag volume under the eye. You can see that it happens to both. If I turn that off, and I maybe add something here, and here, and here, um, you can see how now we're asymmetrical. I can force that symmetry back by saying, you know, move those changes to the other side. And so you can, if for some reason you forget to have the symmetry on, you can certainly do that. And then if you really mess up, you can just re reset it and you'll go back to your beginning there. So we're just gonna go back here, age, and all right, good enough. Um, so we did gender, face, like I said, I work all the way through those. Torso, arms and legs, I don't typically change these because the proportions are generally pretty good. But if you wanted to do something that was a little weird, maybe an alien or something like that, you could certainly change some of those as well. Under geometry, there are a couple different geometries you can export. Um, and it's not obvious from this list what they really look like. So I exported a couple of them and you can kind of see what they look like in Blender. So the Nun looks not too bad. I mean, it gives you fairly clean topology. Um, and then there's the generic, which I think is probably better for deformation because you look, there's a little better detail around the elbows and the knees. Uh, so if you're going to be bending and standing and stuff, that you know maybe that's that's a better topology for you. The 1591 and 741 topologies are not particularly useful unless you're doing a character that's going to be really far away. You know, certainly they have a much lower poly count than these do, but they they won't hold up to close examination. So you know I typically use either generic or none when I export. Eyebrows I tend to skip because I tend to do those as uh, particle systems. Same thing with eyelashes. And you can put these on. They're going to create geometry. It's not going to be convincing at all. If your figure is going to have uh, a mouth open position, if you want them to be able to open their mouth, you want to see inside, certainly include a tongue inside. Um, and same thing with teeth. You can add teeth too. So if you're going to open the mouth, make sure you have some teeth. Hair is... Um, it's not going to be very convincing. It's, this really comes out, it's not, it doesn't come out as a particle system, it comes out as a mesh with a hair texture applied to it. Um, you know, maybe if you wanted something there as a proxy while you're doing some work, but uh, in the end you're going to want to put in your own particle system there. Eyes, the default is a high poly eye, which is okay, it's not great. Uh, you may want to do your own eye later, but certainly as a starting point it works quite well. Under materials, you can assign 
you know, different types of skin characteristics to it. Um, they're not bad for a starting point and for a character that, that's going to be, you know, in the background somewhere, they'd certainly hold up. But if you're going to do, you know, a hero character or someone's going to be close to the camera, um, this would really just be a starting point. You would need to re-UV map the, uh, at least the face and the hands probably, and then go into something like Substance Painter and create a, you know, a detailed texture map. Under Pose and Animate, you can, there are facial, there are facial figures you can do. Um, I'm not aware of any way to export these as shape keys, because that would be awesome. Um, so I typically do none, and then if I need shape keys, I create them in, uh, in Blender itself. Under Pose, you can create or export in different poses. So none is typically pretty good. It's a neutral stance, and so is the tripod, or the T-pose, rather. Uh, I like the like the nun best, but there are, there are other ones too you can do that are kind of more dramatic, but they're not particularly good for, for sculpting because they're not symmetrical. Uh, skeleton's important because by default there is none. So if you're going to export this in Blender and you want a skeleton, I would certainly pick some of these. This is going to be a pretty basic one. It's going to have really no digit control, so there's going to be like you know, one bone for all the fingers kind of thing, no toe bones. The default has bones everywhere. It's got bones in all the toes, it's got bones in all the hands. Um, there is a default default no toes, which is going to give you the same bones everywhere except for the toes. You're just going to have one big bone that controls all the toes, which is typically pretty good if you've got shoes on or something. You don't need to wiggle the toes, uh, but you do have all the digits here. And then there's game engine, which may or may not be applicable for what you're needing, but you can see that you've got some hand bones here, um, but you don't have the, the face face controls that you do with the default and the, de and the default no toes. So I typically use default no toes. All right, that's it for those. Rendering settings, utilities, I don't typically use at all. All right, um, under files, I'm gonna export it. Everything here, you can use all the defaults and you wanna pick a, pick a place to export it to. I'm gonna send it to this file here and I'm gonna call it model and just gonna overwrite my model file and I'm going to save it. It's gonna complain because I already did this once. And then in Blender, I'm going to hide these guys. We don't care about them. I'm going to import. All right, so you want to go up to File, Import, and you want to import the Collada file, a DAE, and you want to pick your, your model. And I'm going to show you what not to do first, and then I'll show you what to do in a second. So we're going to import the model we just exported. And here's what we did wrong. You see, we see brought the guy in, and if we hide him, you look at the bones, Right. The bones are, they're all messed up. Right. They're all these tiny little things and they, they're not useful at all. So we don't want to do that. Uh, what we want to do, let me get rid of that. Import it again. And we're going to say import that. And we want to make sure we check these things. So what happened was that when you import the, the object for the, the DAE file, uh, if you don't have these checked, the bones are going to be really tiny and even some of the bones are going to be missing. So like particularly around the mouth and tongue and stuff like that. So if you check all these off and then we import it and now we look at the bones. We get on the bones in front. Now you can see, look at that skeleton, much better, right? So we've got all the facial bones. Um, when we imported it before, you couldn't even tell, like some of these bones here were actually missing and all the bones were, you know, the wrong size. So not good. And then if we go into pose mode, yeah, guys already rigged, ready to go. All right, so that's it for this part. I'm probably gonna do another couple, one or more uh, videos on what I do once the model's in Blender, you know, as far as adding clothing, sculpting, uh, and then maybe even a substance paint or texture uh, video if I get around to it. But I just want to do a quick video on how to get your basic structure from Make Human and then into Blender as a starting point for your, your character projects. All right, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.